Last night's Game Awards got real interesting. Ryan Reynolds has a new project that'll make you peek a pee your pants, and Jurassic World 2 drops its first trailer. This is your Looter News Live. <laughs> Happy Friday, everybody, and welcome to Looter News Live, your weekly recap of some of the biggest news in geek, gaming, and pop culture. I am your host, Josh Ball. Let's get into this week's story, shall we? Now, remember that time that a major Hollywood studio said, hey, we have a CGI character that says nothing but I am Groot over and over and over again. Let's just get some cheap voice actor to do it. And someone else in the root said, nay, nay, we're going to get Vin Diesel to do it. Well, apparently, Legendary thought that that same logic made sense, or at least I assume so, because Wednesday it was announced that Ryan Reynolds would be playing the title character in the upcoming Detective Pikachu live-action Pokemon movie. While some of us here in the Loot Crate office were really hoping that this was just a clever marketing scheme for that upcoming Deadpool 2 trailer that we're all waiting on, it turns out that Reynolds playing Pikachu is in fact a real thing that is actually happening in real life. Legendary has been tight-lipped about the project so far, and all we currently know about it is that the story starts off with our main character, played by actor Justice Smith, having his father kidnapped, and him teeping up with Detective Pikachu, played by Reynolds, to find things. Because apparently, Pikachu is really good at that. At least, uh, assuming so, because that's his new career choice, being a detective Pokemon. Which I didn't even know was a thing! Anyway, I digress. The film starts shooting in London in mid-January and also stars Big Little Lies actress Catherine Newton. Now, this definitely is towards the top of the list regarding weirder roles that Ryan Reynolds has taken in his career, which brings us to our question of the week. If you could see Ryan Reynolds voice or portray any character in movies, TV, or in video games, who would it be and why? Can't choose a Pikachu Deadpool mashup movie because that pick is totally mine. I, I call it, you can't have it. Let us know what you come up with though in the Facebook Live chat right now and we're gonna pick some of those answers at the end of the show to receive a gift card to the Loot Vault. Now, as we mentioned a moment ago, one of Reynolds' co-stars is Justice Smith, which props that guy for having a cool name. My, my name's Josh Ball, which is not nearly as cool as being called Justice. Anyway, Justice is also part of the cast of the new Jurassic Park movie, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, whose first trailer dropped online just last night. The trailer has received uh, mixed reviews so far online, but it does look fun overall. Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard are reprising their roles as Owen Grady and Claire Deering, with B.D. Wong back again as Dr. Henry Wu, and the man, the myth, the legend himself, Jeff Goldblum, reprising his role as Dr. Ian Malcolm. Man, life really does uh, find a way. In fact, that line even found its way into the trailer, which I thought was hilarious and preposterous. Now, the new film takes place four years after the events of the first Jurassic World movie, with Isla Nublar abandoned by humans, and the dinosaurs are still roaming the island, fending for themselves in the jungles. But it turns out a dormant volcano on the island has roared back to life. Maybe perhaps through the miracle of prehistoric volcano DNA, huh? Zsa, Zsa does not approve, but I am hilarious. Anyway, Chris Pratt decides to go back to the island to save his trained raptor buddy, Blue, but discovers that there may be a bigger conspiracy at play with what's going on with the island. And I'm not making this stuff up. That's really, really what the premise of, of the movie is. He's gonna go back to save his, his raptor friend. I really wish that it wasn't what it is, but with that being said, it still looks super fun anyway. And on top of that, it's a Jurassic Park movie, so of course, there's also gonna be new breeds of dinosaurs that are more terrifying and awesome than ever before. Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom hits theaters June 22nd, 2018. Now, over in DC Universe news, just when you thought Jason Momoa could not possibly look more jacked and beefy and tatted out as he does in Justice League, DC and Aquaman director James Wan show up to the party to prove everyone wrong. The first exclusive photos from the Aquaman set were released yesterday on Entertainment Weekly's website, and as you can see here, this version of Aquaman has an even beefier, darker look to him than the one that we have seen over the last couple of months with Justice League. Now, according to Jason Momoa and James Wan, that's all intentional, with Wan himself stating, quote, it's going to look very different. It will feel very different. Tonally, aesthetically, story-wise, it's my own take. It's much more traditional action-adventure quest movie. And Jason Momoa himself had this to say about the film. 
Justice League was only a weekend in Arthur Curry's life. This is a different beast, a totally different beast in Aquaman. You see when his parents met and what happened to them, then the little boy being raised and finding his powers and going through that and never being accepted on either side. And then becoming this man who puts up all these walls, you just slowly see this man harden up and be completely reluctant wanting to be king and not knowing what to do with these powers he has. I think James Wan just killed it. Now, this all sounds incredibly promising, but we'll sadly have to wait an entire year until December 2018 to see the finished product. Now, we're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, we're going to be talking about all the fun stuff and gaming news that I saw when attending the Game Awards last night here in Los Angeles. And later in the show, we're going to be sharing your answers about what character you'd like to see Ryan Reynolds voice or play and giving away some sweet, sweet loot. So be sure to stick around. How does Loot Crate obtain such exquisite geek and gaming treasures every month? They rely on the best. Every month we curate an epic mystery box of ridiculously cool surprises with amazing themes like cypher and fantasy. Heroes, villains, you get it. Every last crate containing exclusive one-of-a-kind items. Then I deliver it to you for under 20 bucks a month. So get yourself a Loot Crate. Seriously, you already missed out on this one. Join now for exclusive gear and an awesome shirt in every box. Sign up today at LootCrate.com. And we are back. I had the pleasure of joining some of my fellow Loot Crate co-workers at the Game Awards last night, and it was truly a joy getting to see the biggest and brightest in the video game industry coming out for the event. Now, for those that are not familiar with the Game Awards, the event is essentially the Academy Awards for games, and all the greatest gaming titles of 2017 were on display and up for awards all night long. Of course, you had your big name companies and AAA titles representing in the Microsoft Theater with games like Destiny 2, Overwatch, Super Mario Odyssey, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, and many more. But you also had some of the lesser known developers, publishers, and indie titles that have really roared unexpectedly onto the scene with games like Cuphead, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, Fortnite, and more taking center stage as well. While many tune in to see who will be taking home the hardware for awards like Best Game Direction, Best Indie Game, Best Action Game, Game of the Year, etc., most folks who know the Game Awards at this point know that it's also a place where developers show off never before seen trailers, clips, etc., and this year's show did not disappoint. While the reveals from The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild's new DLC, PUBG's new desert map, and a brand new 50 vs 50 mode in Fortnite were all exciting for the majority of the crowd, I have to say that the reveal from Nintendo around Bayonetta 1, 2, and now the newly revealed Bayonetta 3 coming to the Switch had a pretty incredible response from the folks in the room, maybe just as much or more than from some of the bigger name franchises. While the entire show was incredible and awe-inspiring for me, I do have to say that as a fan and a consumer, I couldn't have gotten more hyped up from some of the big reveals, but I had three that really stood out. First off, the kind of out-of-nowhere premiere of GTFO from the folks that brought us Payday. This horror-themed four person hardcore survival co-op first person shooter made me want to get together with my buds and start taking down evil alien monster things without delay. Second was the incredibly cryptic and gritty teaser showcased by From Software, the minds behind Dark Souls and Bloodborne. Now, there's a ton of speculation flying around the interwebs right now as to what this could be a teaser for. Is it a new Asian-inspired Bloodborne title? Is it a Tenchu title? Is it a completely different IP entirely? Only time will tell, but being a FromSoft fanboy like I am, I'm definitely gonna be getting my hands on this one for sure. And finally, the moment that many were waiting for, Death Stranding. Now, many of us knew that this was coming. Once there Kojima, was an explosion, Norman Reedus, and Guillermo del Toro were announced as presenters to life ahead of the show, it. but none of us were prepared for the total mind-blowing insanity and absurdity that was the Death Stranding trailer. I wish I could tell you that I have the brain capacity to really wrap my head around that Kojima fever dream, but I just couldn't. I can't, I can't do it. I couldn't do it. I even had the pleasure of meeting Hideo Kojima after the show, and my hope was that by shaking his hand, I could better understand his genius, his genius mind by absorbing some of his power, and unfortunately, today, I'm just as confused as ever. But I do gotta say, after seeing the show last night and all that it had to offer, I can say that the future for gaming is as bright as ever. We have one more break, but when we come back, we're gonna be talking about your answers for what role you would like to see Ryan Reynolds play and hooking you guys and gals up with some free loot to the loot vault, so don't go away. You have made it this far. 
Like me, you came up through the ranks, through hard work and sheer determination. What you are transitioning into is unlike anything you have ever experienced before. We are sending you where other soldiers dare not tread. You will win. You will defeat the enemy. You will return, and you will do it all again tomorrow. Now, you are Spartans. Welcome to Fireteam Apollo. Welcome back. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, at the top of the show, we asked you what characters you would like to see Ryan Reynolds voice or play, and we have got your answers. First up, we have Anthony Ayers, who says he would like to see Ryan Reynolds voice Michelangelo from Ninja Turtles. I like that he was specific about Michelangelo, because Michelangelo is obviously the, the best one. Uh, next up, we have Juanita Lamas Vea, or Vela, I apologize if I've mispronounced her name. She says, SpongeBob SquarePants, I would love to see this. I would love to see like a gritty, like, uh, I don't know, like a Guy Ritchie style, like comedy, SpongeBob SquarePants, voiced by Ryan Reynolds. I'm thinking about some things. Any of you movie maker people out there, holler at me, because I got ideas for days. And then finally, we have James William Hardis, who says he would like Ryan Reynolds to voice Josh Ball. I would be honored to have Ryan Reynolds voice me as well. Um, so if we read one of your answers, one of our team will message you on Facebook sometime after the show today to get you your gift card to Loot Vault. And if we didn't, or you're watching this later on YouTube or Twitch, be sure to come back next week, 2 p.m. Pacific, to join us live at facebook.com slash loot crate to have more chances at some free loot. And if you'd like to see more of us before then, be sure to follow us over on our Twitch page at twitch.tv slash loot crate, where you can chat with us live during Twitch Tuesday Tuesdays while we answer your questions, play video games, give out prizes, and just generally have a great time hanging out with all of you. And if you've got a moment, be sure to also check out our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Loot Crate to check out our latest theme video, previous episodes of Looter News Live, product reveals, and so much more. And while you're there, maybe even hit that subscribe button so that you can be the first to see the latest and greatest content that we put up on our YouTube page because here at Loot Crate, we do awesome stuff all the time. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I hope you all have a phenomenal and safe weekend and we will see you next week on an all new Looter News Live. Shaboo!